Good afternoon. Welcome to the BBC News at one o'clock. Welcome to Westminster. Gordon Brown is reshuffling his cabinet in an attempt to reassert his authority after the shock resignation of the Work and Pension Secretary, James Pennell. The BBC understands that Alan Johnson is the new Home Secretary, Alastair Darling keeps his job as Chancellor and David Miliband will stay at the Foreign Office. The Defence Secretary, John Hutton, has said that he's leaving the cabinet. The reshuffle comes as Labour braces itself for bad results in English local elections. Now, this may not be the reshuffle that the Prime Minister had originally wanted, but at 10 o'clock last night, there was a real question mark over whether Gordon Brown would still be here this lunchtime. But he is, and by all accounts, the reshuffle is proceeding apace. Now, all morning, details have been leaking out, but as yet, Downing Street haven't confirmed any of the appointments. So let's take a look at how we understand Gordon Brown's cabinet is shaping up. Alan Johnson will move from health to become the Home Secretary. He takes over from Jackie Smith, who resigned earlier in the week. And despite all the speculation that he might be moved, the Chancellor, Alistair Darling, is staying put. David Miliband will remain the Foreign Secretary. And Jack Straw also keeps his post as Justice Secretary, as is the Business Secretary, Peter Mandelson. The University and Skills Secretary, John Denham, he's expected to become the new Community Secretary. That's the post that Hazel Bleers resigned from on Wednesday. It's reported that Yvette Cooper will become Work and Pension Secretary, the jobs that James Pennell left so dramatically late last night. And in the past few minutes, we've heard that Ed Balls is to keep his job as School Secretary. Well, let's get a roundup of an extraordinary day of events. Our political correspondent, Joe Coburn, now reports. The Prime Minister's position had never looked so perilous. As the polls closed last night, James Purnell, the Work and Pension Secretary, announced in a statement he was quitting the Cabinet and asked Gordon Brown to go for the sake of the party. In his resignation letter, he said, I now believe your continued leadership makes a Conservative victory more, not less, likely. I'm therefore calling on you to stand aside to give our party a fighting chance of winning. It was a monumental blow and could have been fatal if David Miliband, the Foreign Secretary, once accused of plotting against Gordon Brown, had backed James Purnell's move. Instead, he said his friend was wrong. I don't share the judgment that he made. I have a different decision. I think that the voices that we need to listen to are the voices of people who depend on a strong and effective and progressive Labour government. James Purnell's sensational move rocked Downing Street and forced the Prime Minister to bring forward his critical reshuffle in a bid to hold on to power. Having reshaped his cabinet, the Prime Minister can expect a certain amount of loyalty and protection against the bad news that's expected to come from voters. But the Prime Minister's authority is weakened. He couldn't move Alistair Darling out of number 11 and install his close ally, Ed Balls. But crucially, he's been able to persuade the man seen as his potential successor to take the vacancy at the Home Office, ensuring Alan Johnson's loyalty, at least for now. In an unexpected turn of events, the Defence Secretary John Hutton, once one of Gordon Brown's toughest critics, has said he's leaving the Cabinet, but for family rather than political reasons. My decision is a personal one. I am absolutely committed to supporting Gordon as Prime Minister and doing everything I can to get a Labour government re-elected at the next election. In other moves, John Denham has replaced Hazel Bleers to become the new Community Secretary. The new cabinet will be bracing themselves for bad local election results as counting continues across the country. So far, the Conservatives have made modest gains, winning control of the new central Bedfordshire Unitary Council and increasing their majority in Lincolnshire. David Cameron remains focused on Gordon Brown's leadership. We need a government that is strong, that is united, that has a purpose. Instead, we have a government in complete chaos. We really do deserve better than this. A sentiment echoed by the Liberal Democrat leader after his party scored their first hit in the local elections, gaining Bristol from no overall control. This government can no longer govern. It is dysfunctional, it is in meltdown. They're now fighting with each other rather than reaching out to help people. The opposition is on the attack, but Gordon Brown may have more to fear from those within his own party. One long-term critic of the Prime Minister has openly called for a contest.
There should be a leadership election. We should have the chance that we didn't have two years ago, that we should be three or four candidates. If Gordon wants to be one of them, that's fine, to lay their stall out and so that we, our voters and our members, can make a choice about who is leader of the Labour Party and what direction we're going in. The Prime Minister has survived this latest drama, but the local and European election results may trigger more rebellion and calls for him to go. Joe Coburn, BBC News, Westminster. Well, our political editor, Nick Robinson, is in Downing Street for us. We can go to Nick Robinson now. Uh, Nick, any more blanks to fill in on this reshuffle? Oh, there's still quite a few blanks to fill in, crucially in health, crucially in defence. But what is interesting about today is that this is not the reshuffle that Gordon Brown hoped to have or planned to have indeed. Not just because some people have walked out, most notably of course James Pennell overnight, the Work and Pension Secretary, who either would have kept that job or been promoted. But earlier this week Mr Brown's senior advisers were saying the Chancellor would be moved, that he had to be moved. It was time for a fresh start at the Treasury, partly for political reasons, to take the battle to the Conservative Party in the next election, partly because he wanted his old ally Ed Balls in that job partly because Mr Darling's own expenses were in the public domain and there was a desire to quote advisers to Mr Brown to have a firewall between the past and the future. In other words, to decode that, there had to be a clean break, if you like, between those people who had got themselves into the headlines because of their expenses and those who had not. So at 10 o'clock last night, when we thought there was a real possibility that Gordon Brown might fall, can we now say that he's in the clear? We can't yet say he's in the clear. We can say he's much stronger than he might have been. Why? It'll seem odd that, won't it? Because James Pennell took a solo decision, a, a lonely decision, a brave decision, and nobody followed him. He was hoping that by not telling anybody that he was about to resign, it would maximise the shock value, it would maximise the surprise, it would also make it impossible for Mr Brown's allies to brief against him to try and damage him. The problem was no one then followed him. But more importantly than that, his close friend and ally David Miliband, the man he wants to be the next leader of the Labour Party, far from following him, actually criticised him in public and said he wanted Gordon Brown to succeed. That was the crucial moment. Now, I'm joined now by Lord Mandelson, the business secretary.